best Even though I'm so stressed out Everything just feels like a test That I feel so depressed When I can't seem to get out Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel It's Charlie here, IC Customs We are back on the CB750 project And we have made a little progress I've done some things without shooting video of it So I was going to go over it here with you um, the last uh, episode you saw that we were putting up the subframe and putting that in place at this point I've already uh, Created the under plate mounting tabs then drilled and tapped them. They're welded in place I've already welded in the plates That's going to support the bottom side of the battery a the uh, Moto gadget unit and the start relay so I'll go over and show you what we got and we'll kind of touch base what I'm going to do and then we'll move forward from there. All right, so what we have, that's all my battery, motor gadget and start relay. We'll go over that stuff here in a minute. So the tank is back mounted. I have the, what I did is that piece of plywood, I had clamped it to the bottom side of the table and I had trimmed some small uh, spacers basically and put those underneath this plate here so I could tack weld it into place these were already pre-drilled and ready to go if you remember in the last episode I had a piece of one inch round tubing notched and fit in here um, I decided to take that out so that way I gave me plenty of room in here for my electronics so what I've done is I've already marked the distance. I think I did this in the last episode, but um, so it gives me 14 inches for my seat area. And then the hump will be back here. Um, I still have to notch this section of the tube out because of my the way my lights are going to be. So I need to be able to get in and be able to fasten to those or have them recess in there. But I'm gonna wait on notching them until after I've made my tail light housing assembly and then figure out how it's going to get mounted to the back here and see what clearances I need to modify on the tubes. All right, so this larger uh, uh, plate is for the battery. Um, you don't need much. These batteries weigh like two pounds. So that will sit on here and it will get a strap that goes across to lock it down here. And I generally put rubber down on here once the powder coat is done on the subframe or the, the frame itself and then I'll have a, a strap that'll, that'll also have rubber in it that will clamp down there so if you've seen my FJ project at the finals of that you'll see how I did that battery in there so I'm doing the same thing my motor gadget is going to go right here basically what I'm looking for I'll have to machine some standoffs just enough to give me some threaded area so it'll raise it up a little bit so the motor gadget will go there and after that in between the battery and the motor gadget will be the start relay. I like these start relays simply because it comes with a 30 amp fused circuit and that works great because the output from here goes to the input on the motor gadget. So I have my motor gadget fused with a 30 amp circuit which is plenty. Um, and then these come with a spare uh, socket on the side for a spare fuse. So these are great um, to have because uh, you'll you're you're carrying a spare fuse with you. So that's this plate was from I had made this plate for the XV920R that I ended up putting the uh, uh, later model the the version the gen 2 starter system on it so i no longer needed it so i took the plate which i'm going to repurpose it for this particular build and i'll have to machine some standoffs and then that will get mounted in between here um, so that's how that's going to go <laughs> i've kind of mocked it up before and everything so what that does is it allows my all my wires to run down the side of the this frame here and as you can see this will have the plate underneath here so i'll just have to weld my wire harness tabs <coughs> on here pardon me so anyways that's where we're at at this point i am making 
the fasteners. I will make a ground lug that'll get welded to this frame. Um, and what other fasteners that I need, I'll go ahead and get those machined and we'll get them welded in place. So when we come back, I'll have the uh, those particular fasteners done. Not necessarily, I may or may not have the clamp that holds this down. Um, you remember when you make these, you gotta make your clamp a little bit bigger to compensate for the amount of rubber you're gonna put in there and still have you some compression capabilities when you tighten the bolts. So when we come back, we'll have some stuff done and I'll show you what I've done and we'll touch base a little bit further. All right, I got all the mounts done. I even made the bracket that holds the battery down. Um, you can see there's a decent gap underneath there. That's because I put 3 16 rubber adhesive back rubber on the bottom side and then I'll put it on the top section of this and then that will allow it to compress down onto the battery. I already had the mount made like I said from my XV920R so all I had to do was make my standoffs like the rest of them. I just machined some standoffs and then I tap them for the M5 thread and then weld them on. So this is my start solenoid and then there's the motor gadget and you can see the standoff underneath there. It's all welded in. So what I'll be able to do now is on this terminal of the start solenoid, I'll be able to bend a piece of copper bar and tie it directly to the post right here. And then I just got to machine one more um, actual standoff to weld on here. So I'll be able to put my ground strap onto the chassis right there. Um, this leaves all this wide open, so all the wires coming from the MO unit, battery, uh, start solenoid, everything going that way. So yay, it's all done. I'll get this done, but at this point I'm going to move on. I have to do that, then I'm going to work on putting the bottom aluminum tray in since this is all done and these are all tapped. So all I need to do is cut that um, piece of aluminum that I have and get that mounted in here. And then we can move on to start making the back section for the tail lights and of course the seat hump. And then forward from that, we'll go to the actual seat pan itself. So that's it. When we come back, I'll have the ground strap on and I'll have the bottom tray done and that'll wrap this up. All right, everybody, we are back. We have the tray, it's mounted and it's all the screws are in place tanks back on i put my uh, fixtures back up they're just temporarily screwed in i went ahead and welded in or machined the lug and then welded it in position so again i'm going to take copper plate and i will bend a tab so i have minimal wires at least the heavy gauge stuff so there'll be a copper plate going to this a copper plate coming to the terminal on the start relay and then the cable going down to the starter we go through motor gadgets in at this point we are done with this section all we need now is focus on is getting the tail light uh, assembly what i'm going to do for that and then start building the seat hump um, to give you a reference on how tall it is you can see it's not very tall at all um, what three three and a quarter inches as far as height to that very very small so uh, you could get i could theoretically get a really low profile hump i don't know what i'm going to do yet um i'll do a one-off fiberglass mold most likely well possibly i may end up uh, making actual an actual mold from it we'll see uh, as it starts to lay up but i'll most likely start with a wood template here. I got to first complete the tail light uh, assembly before I can actually start making it because it's going to mold over the top or around it. So that'll need to be done. So that's the next function will be is making my tail light oval for back here. Um, but as you see, it looks really nice. Give you the underside view of it. The flush head screws in here. So. Yay, it's all done. Also, whenever the seat tray is made, I usually use those uh, quick release hood latches and I'll drill a hole through the back side, underside here to put the release. Uh, you just push the button underneath the actual uh, seat tray or pan here and then lift the seat 
assembly up. So that's it for this. Um, when I come back, we'll most likely start a new episode and that'll do the, uh, the seat hump and most likely the seat tray. Well, the light section, the seat hump and the seat tray. So when we come back to the next episode. So I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. If you got any questions, please feel free to drop them down there in the description or comment section. And I'll do what I can to help you out.